Hello and welcome back once again from my doomsday bunker uh, to Belmont Bunch talking about the final Western Conference play-in series, the 5th seeded Edmonton Oilers, the 12th seeded Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> Let's get right into it. I'm Keemstar now, apparently. So, we have Edmonton, a team that coming into the season is probably the team I was most wrong about. Them and the eh, Rangers a little bit. Edmonton, uh, first of all, use these uniforms as your homes. I don't like orange as a primary, except on the Flyers, basically. Uh, I think people have seen the Islanders jerseys and aren't big fans of them. So... Anyway, let's talk about those beautiful numbers and what a job Dave, Dave Tippett has done this year as the coach of the Oilers. They are incredibly, uh, they're pretty deep scoring-wise. Obviously, when you have Mc, Connor McJesus uh, as your first-line center, you're going you're gonna to do pretty well scoring-wise, even if your team isn't that good. 97 points for number 97. Still had 10, 10 or so games to play in the regular season. He's unreal. Leon Dreisaitl. Um, last year, maybe some people were just like, eh, product of McDavid a bit. Let's see this year. He is still fantastic, winning the scoring title. And that is not, you know, he doesn't always play with Connor McDavid. Sometimes he is that second line center. So a lot of credit to Leon Dreisaitl for proving people wrong, including myself. Uh, on the right, Kashin, Yamamoto, and uh, Chayasin, Chason, Chason. I've heard it said different ways. Good depth there. Uh, Archibald, um, eh. Uh, you know, if, if Nygaard comes back uh, from injury, maybe he claims that spot back. James Neal maybe moves up. James Neal showed signs of life this year. Uh, I also went to the game where he scored four against the Islanders, so... I was gonna, I was gonna say something worse. Uh, you got Tyler Ennis, Andreas Athanasia later because he's fast. Uh, Riley Sheehan, um, uh, Kara, good fourth line center, grit brings the grit. Um, yeah, just a pretty deep scoring lineup, which is good because their blue line doesn't really provide much in the way of points uh, outside of Oscar Kleffbaum, um, but. You know, defense, 3.03 uh, .03 goals per game against. Uh, not terrible, like we've, like I've said uh, multiple times, scoring was up this year. So, um, you know, that's not that bad. Um, look at those special teams. That is unreal. That's a combination of great coaching, uh, great special teams coaching, so not just all on Tippett there, uh, and obviously ridiculously good talent as well. Um, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Nugent Hopkins on a power play unit. James Neal is still dangerous on a power play unit if he plays on it uh, because of his wonderful shot. They got, uh, they were able to bring over uh, Mr. Green down there, Mike Green, uh, as an offensive defenseman uh, to bring some more points to the blue line as I scratch my leg. And very unfortunate for him to get hurt fairly quickly. Um, but even without him, this lineup is pretty good and their special teams are fantastic and their goaltending is okay. The goaltending is about, is where I, uh, bring the praise back a tiny bit. They've split fairly evenly this year. Neither has been miles ahead of the other. So I actually don't know who the game one starter would be. I have Koskinen, uh, listed, listed there, but, uh, you never know. Blackhawks moving over to the Blackhawks. Obviously, Taves, Kane, Debrinkit, Keith. Um, outside of Debrinkit, incredible amount of success in the playoffs with those guys. And Corey Crawford. Uh, although this year has been a journey uh, from concussion issues and such. And uh, I think if they knew they were still going to be in the playoffs at this point or playing for them, probably would have kept Robin Leonard or they might have. I don't know. Um, because Robin Lehner could have had the potential to steal this series. Of course, Corey Crawford, good as well. But still, Malcolm Subban has struggled mightily. Um, 
and I'm not quite sure he's even backup material at this point, which is unfortunate. So scoring wise, um, some decent depth onto the third line. Kirby Doc has shown um, some pretty impressive stuff early on. Dominic Kubalik uh, has been fantastic. 30 goals, first year in the league. Um, very impressed with his play. He has outplayed uh, the first line right winger there, Brandon Saad. And uh, that trade does not look good. It does not look good giving up an Aaron for Saad. But either way, some good talent. Uh, Debrinkit and Kubalik bring some nice young scoring uh, to Patrick Kane's not old scoring, but older scoring. Uh, Jonathan Tay is still showing uh, good in the point department uh, when it comes to uh, assists mostly. The defense is a little bit patchwork. Uh, as you see, they've been pretty, pretty badly hit with injuries. Boquist has a good shot at playing in this scenario. Most of this day-to-day -day still on the website where I get all these lines, which is Daily Faceoff. Brent Seabrook uh, has been such an adventure, and I don't think they would extremely badly miss him uh, should he not be able to play. They've been trying to offload his contract for a while. You know, there's always the potential. If he plays, he's had playoff success before, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. He looks like he's skating in quicksand as well now, so there's that. Um, Amada, some experience. The Pens, not a ton of experience here. Uh, one of my favorite names, uh, Slater Cuckoo. Uh, fun name. Didn't have much else to say. I think I've said that before about a different player. Either way, uh, Kajula, they'd probably like to get back into the lineup. Hagel hasn't played much. So, yeah, it's it's okay. Um, I mean, but that's what you're going to get out of a team that was a 12 seed and would not be relatively close to the playoffs if it wasn't for um, the world ending. So there's that. Um, Goaltending-wise, yeah, I said Crawford still has the potential. Not in the same exact vein as Carey Price, but who knows? He wakes up. He plays fantastic. But it's going to be tough against the, the depth that the Oilers have. So, yeah, neither team has fantastic goaltending in this series. The Oilers, I think, are a goaltender away from being absolutely terrifying. Maybe in the offseason they go after Robin Lehner. But, hey, just throwing that out there. So, um, numbers-wise, uh, more goals allowed than scored. Not great. Surprisingly low goals per game for a team that has Patrick Kane. Jonathan Taze, Debrinkit, Kabalik. Um, they have not gotten a ton out of Alex Nylander. Almost said William. Uh, Brandon Saad has been mired. Uh, apparently, they were trying to trade, trade Dylan Strom, but he showed signs this year of really being, uh, you know, what he was cracked up to be. So I'm surprised they would want to do that. Um, and also playing with Patrick Kane, pretty helpful. But yeah, um... Defense isn't great. Let's go through the three, as we've always done, the three aspects of the game. Four words um, I'm going to give to the Oilers. It, I, I mean, like, Drysaddle McDavid, Nugent Hopkins. Yamamoto's been very fun to watch. Uh, Athanasiu. Neil on the fourth line there adds some, some scoring touch. It's a pretty decent lineup. It's pretty nice. Blackhawks forward lineup, not bad. Not bad. I just think the star power... Um, is currently eclipsing with the Blackhawks. You know, their star power is a little bit towards the back half of its prime, probably just out of its prime, but still showing. I mean, maybe not Kane. Kane's still showing, still showing up every night. He looks great. I don't know. There's a lot of holes for the Blackhawks. Uh, the blue line's not very experienced and uh, isn't very good. It's okay. Could be worse, I guess, considering. Uh, the lack of experience, uh, you know, guys like Boquist and Baudouin, Baudin, whatever, uh, I'm not French. For me, it's not going to be uh, too difficult. I'm going to pick the Oilers. Uh, I'm going to pick them in probably four, maybe three. In a best of five, I just think Connor McDavid could just run away with the series himself. And he's also got Leon Dreisaitl, who could also run away with the series himself. Patrick Kane, fantastic, but the Oilers kind of have two of them. So you shut one down, they still got the other. Um, unfortunately, Debrinkit's uh, goal numbers have gone down this year. It's tough. 
Um, you know, Taze is getting a little bit older. And uh, who knows? The Blackhawks, they're kind of stuck in no man's land right now. And the Oilers feel like they, I to me, feel like they're on the verge of something special. So, yeah, for me, it's not a big surprise to take the Oilers in the series, especially when you look at the special teams battle. I mean, good penalty kill for the Blackhawks, great penalty kill for the Oilers, incredible power play. That could just be the deciding factor. If the, the Hawks end up in the box even a little bit, oh, boy. Yeah, so we're going to take the Oilers. Uh, I feel pretty confident in that. That's it for the Western Conference. I picked two upsets and two non-upsets, so I we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. If you're a Hawks or an Oilers fan, sound off below and let me know. Um, if you're an Oilers fan, maybe who's starting goal game one, if, it's, if you're the coach. And if you're a Blackhawks fan, tell me, like, what's the path in this series for the Blackhawks to, uh, to stop McDavid and Dreisaitl? Yeah, keep coming back. We got the Eastern Conference coming up. Uh, and for the Islander fans, of course, I will be covering the Islanders in more detail coming up. And uh, due to popular demand, as much as you can from a channel of 84 subs, I'm going to be doing a Hockey 101 type series. Uh, so you'll have the nerdy side with me, who never played, but has been a huge fan since like the very early 2000s. And then you've got uh, my brother, who I'll try to have on as much as I can, who did play uh, and can give a little bit more insight than a bender like me. So that's it for now. Hope everybody's doing well. For now, uh, like and subscribe. Like down below. Subscription things down there too.